Hey there. <laughs> How are you guys? Nobody's even watching, so I'm talking to myself right now. It's not the first time. Won't be the last time. Hello, Chuck and Change. Hello, Johnny Lightning. I'm sure you are. Hello, Julie Flanagan. I'm still here. I'm just getting a little water, getting my stuff going. Good morning, <coughs> Cindy Strickland. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Arkham. Arkham, we need to put a real name there for you, or at least I need to learn it, because I always call you Arkham. Maybe that's close to what your real name is. Maybe your name is Arkham. Maybe you had uh, weird parents like Frank Zappa, who named his child Moonbeam. <laughs> your parents looked at you when you came out and said, that's my little Arkham. <laughs> Good morning, Jack Taylor. Oh, hi, Renee. I hope you're not offended that I was joking, but I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, okay, Holly's, Holly's saying goodbye, guys. She's got a rawhide bone, and she's headed out into the backyard with her rawhide. She's super excited. She's super proud. Hello, Buttermy. Happy to. Uh... And I'm a little out of sorts. I just got concrete. Not totally out of sorts. Kind of random, normal out of sorts. But good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Uh, my name is Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. There's a little show I've been doing for a long, long time. It's a show about me talking, kind of sharing some stuff. Kind of just seeing where the conversation goes. But for those that are watching a while, you know it's also a show about me sharing my love of coffee. And with that in mind, I got a nice hot cup of coffee, or I don't, I have about, it says six cups, you know that's about two and a half cups, and a little splash left in this that I just microwaved up. I'm going to mix them together. I'm going to grab my phone. I'm going to go into the living room. I'm going to sit down. Good morning, Shannon. Hello, Abby. And anyone else? Hello, Twisted uh, Little. It seems so dark. It's so dark today. I'm wondering, like, did my light bulb go out? Oh, I got CNBC on. I apologize for that. Oh, interesting. Wendy's chocolate frosty cereal. I've never heard of such a thing. You know how I, although I still do it, watching the news, I think, is a bad habit. And I'm going to turn off CNBC, which is something I watch. As far as news goes... It's okay, because they don't talk about train crashes or, I don't know, murders or fires or whatever. And not that those things aren't real events to those that are happening to. But if you're watching the news every day, your local news, your life is a series of fires and murders and train crashes. And that's just, I don't think, a way, a good way to have your life be. Uh, uh, no, I did not see Gordon Ramsay opening a restaurant in Naperville. I wonder if he's hiring uh, anyway, I'm coming at you from Naperville, Illinois, and I live in one of the smallest little homes in Naperville. Uh, I heard, I live one of the, it's a two bedroom, one bath ranch on a quiet little cul-de-sac. It's kind of a dark day. You know, I'm not one to complain about weather, so I'm not complaining. The weather's fine. It's January weather, but I'd say it's fairly uninteresting weather this season. We haven't had much snow. We haven't had, we've had a little bit of cold, a uh, little bit of warm, but not, it's been kind of like 35 and kind of gray almost every day this winter. And that's fine. It's just what it is. But I'm a guy that enjoys thunderstorms, snowstorms. I don't really like wind a heck of a lot, but either way, if it's super windy, it's kind of neat just watching the branches just go. <laughs> that's my wind, imitation of wind. This is better than a polar vortex. Are you old enough to remember the polar vortex, RJ? Speaking of polar vortex, that happened when Holly, who's sitting out there, was just a puppy. Had to take her out. And it was like minus 20-something degrees Fahrenheit. It was really cold. But anyway, I'm going to grab a seat. Look at, my, look at my one sad candle. Can you guys see that? I don't know if you can see it. But it looks so sad and lonely. It's the bottom. It's a three-wick candle. Only one of them's going. I'm going to pop my phone down and lean it against it. 
Oh, the whale was good, Jack Taylor? Would I ever move to a warm climate? No, I don't think I'd move to a warm climate. Uh, I might move to somewhere. Good morning, Mountain Mama. Oh, yeah. Thank you, RJ. Uh, I'm excited uh, to have some coffee. And I did not reveal the flavor of coffee I was drinking uh, in my morning video. But I'm going to take a first sip. I hope wherever you are, whatever you're doing, uh, you got a hot cup of coffee or whatever drink you're choosing. If it's milk, if it's water, if it's tea, whatever. It's all good. Uh, even if it's somebody the other day was drinking coffee and uh, Fireball. I don't drink alcohol anymore, but I have fond memories of coffee and Baileys. So cheers to us. Oh. That'll be my big reveal. It's the hazelnut again. It's my third day in a row drinking the hazelnut. Uh, it's a big reveal. I feel you guys were all sitting on the edge of your seat. What kind of coffee is he drinking? I gotta know what kind of coffee is he drinking? And it's the same coffee I've been drinking for the last three days. But cheers again. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello, David. Hello, Jack Taylor, David Androsky. I'm watching you live. Well, I'm glad you're watching me live. I don't know what Wednesday weekend means, but thank you all for joining. Again, my name's Ken Tracy, and this is Coffee with Ken. Uh, oh, I talked about lighting more candles because it's kind of dim in my house. <sighs> Gotta light the candles. Feel like it's the 1700s or something like that. Not much left in this candle. I need to go candle shopping soon. Uh, but we're going to light the ones we got because that's what we do. It is Seattle's best chunk of change. It was on sale. I went to Mariano's the other day. Uh, and uh, uh, it's good to go shopping, grocery shopping. A, when you're not starving. And B, when you don't desperately, desperately, desperately need something. Because when you like desperate, I mean, when I say I desperately, desperately, desperately need something, it's probably like a home run in sausage and pepperoni pizza. So it's not like it's, you know, I don't know, rice to make a big pot and feed my family. I mean, so I don't know if you really ever desperately, desperately, desperately need a home run in meat and or sausage and pepperoni pizza, but I kind of feel I do. But anyway, when you have to go buy something, in today's inflationary world with prices as they are, kind of sucks because you can get chopped and you can spend like 10 bucks on a home run in pizza or if you value shop and do it at the right time, you can find it for sale. Thank you. Find it on sale for uh, $5.99 or something like that. So it's good to go. Um, uh, somebody just asked, where's Augie? I think by now we all know that Augie doesn't live with me full time. So if he's not here, he's probably with his mother chunk of change. I think you know that. So I mean, he's with me. He stays over about one night a week. That means six days a week. I won't be having coffee with Augie. And it's sometimes kind of challenging. Sometimes we do great videos with Augie. Uh, it is a nice hoodie. Thank you. It is a nice hoodie. Uh, I got a buddy that owns a construction company. Really quality. It's really quality. I like hoodies, but I struggle a little bit because uh, sometimes I want to like lay on my couch. Oh, no, no, chunk of change. I have them Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3 to 7. And Sundays from 9 to 5. And some days on Tuesdays and Thursdays, he'll sleep over. Uh, sometimes he'll sleep over on one of those days. But it's usually once a week or once every two weeks. So I don't have them all the time. Uh, he, again, he's from 3 to 7. But sometimes you'll lay... <laughs> the problem with hoodies is... Uh, I heard I sound like Mike Rowe. And he's got a good voice. I don't think he hits the high tones like I do. <laughs> but anyway, sometimes you want to lay down on your couch or on a pillow and the hoodie kind of bunches up on your head. Makes it not too, too comfortable, but they're nice and warm. I can wear it. I have a light kind of ballish, springish jacket and I can go out on a chillier day with a nice warm hoodie and feel kind of comfortable. Oh, well, thank you for complimenting my voice. Somebody asked me to put the hood up. I feel like a criminal. I feel like a criminal. I don't know if I'm the Unabomber or, I don't know, a gangbanger or a hood. You know what they used to call them? I think in the 50s where they called hoods. I assume that's where the name came from, hoods. 
Oh, put the head. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you, David. Yeah, because if I'm wearing it like that. Yeah, okay, so it's out of the way. I never even thought of that, Joy. I never even thought of that. But then it might be kind of warm. You'd be proud. I had home run in pizza for the first time. So what flavor did you get, Jack Taylor? And again, I don't know if I'd be proud. I was thinking about it. I got some guys that follow this page that are big into affiliate marketing. And as most of you know, I'm looking for a new career after a 17 year in uh, real estate. <laughs> uh, after a 17 year in real estate. And I'm going to vote no on that if I must. Uh, uh and a lot of me really enjoys the heck out of uh, uh, doing what I'm doing and talking live to you guys. And uh, uh, I don't understand what TOC means, David. I'm reading your questions. And sometimes I do better when I don't read the questions because it, I, my thoughts get all jumbled. And I'll be talking an amazing story about the value of candles. And then I'll read a question and I'll go, huh, I don't even know what that means in my story about the candle. And granted, this is just a hypothetical situation. I wasn't even telling a story about the candle. But I'll get distracted and I'll go, huh, what is a TOC? But David, what is a TOC? Is that TikTok? I'll tell you that story. It's not that exciting. I'm going to assume it's what made me get, uh, no, I don't really like incense a whole heck of a lot. It reminds me of, I don't know, going into a drug dealer's house or something like that. You know, I don't know. It smells, to me, the connection between incense is pot. Oh, TikTok. What got me into TikTok? Okay. I was on another social media platform, the big one, and I uh, was do started Coffee with Ken almost four years ago. Or not almost. It'll be four years in June. I had uh, broken up with the woman of my dreams, gotten thrown out of my house, oh yeah, and uh, moved into a dark apartment in Naperville, not too far from where I'm living now, irony, irony, and uh, I don't know, I was bummed, I had all these horrible feelings going on in my heart and in my soul and in my head, and I always realized uh, talking about my stuff made me feel a little better, and I started doing it uh, live on that social media platform every Saturday. Well, you should watch me live. And anyway, uh, I was doing it live every Saturday. I'd go on for a half an hour, 45 minutes, and people started watching. And people started sending me messages saying, hey, thank you for talking about that. It makes me feel good. Or you're talking about your anxiety. Or you're talking about your substance abuse. Or you're talking about your relationship troubles. Or your happiness. Or your joy. Or your love of sunlight. Or whatever it might be. It's kind of what I'm doing right now. And... Uh, uh, anyway, it started growing. It started growing. And a lot of people weirdly watch it and this. And um, I had a buddy whose daughter was in, uh, I don't know, psychology or philosophy or senior year in high school. And she was watching it with their dad and mom. And uh, they were watching the content. And it was something I was talking about, I don't know, over a year ago now. And it was about, I think, drinking or depression or something or how I dealt with it. And... Uh, she said, uh, wow, he should put this in front of a larger audience. This is really good. And uh, she edited a couple of those videos. And those are my very first two videos done here on TikTok were her editing and splicing up a couple of my videos she saw a year and a half ago. I mean, I'd say go find them, but you'd have to spend about two weeks paging through all the videos I posted. So anyway, I didn't know what to do. She didn't keep sending me edited clips of my videos, uh, but I wanted more content. And I started doing a live show uh, every, or I started doing videos every morning and I started going live every day at eight o'clock about three months ago. Has done it again, Ken. Mark, do your older daughters watch? They definitely, uh, I think they kind of think it's cool. I actually deleted a video yesterday. I posted it and then I deleted it. And it was about, um, well, hold on. It was about uh, pot smoking. And uh, RJ here asked me about something about pot smoking the other day. And I kind of had a funny response, I thought. And I talked about it. And I talked about it in almost a kind of a funny way, but almost too positive. And not only do my daughters watch, but a lot of her friends watch. 
And uh, I don't know. You know, I talked about smoking pot and abusing it, but I didn't want to talk about it in a, such a jovial, friendly way. Uh, because honestly, I don't think, uh, you know, you guys do you. I'm not, I know there's a lot of people smoke pot. It's legal in Illinois and it's fine and whatever. If it works for you, it works for you. But it just wasn't working for me. And I was abusing it and I was smoking in the morning and smoking in the afternoon and I was smoking in the evening. And I'd fall asleep and I'd be drinking while I'm smoking because beer tastes really, really good while you're smoking pot. And I don't know, it just became a bad habit and it was just something I was doing and I was doing using it to uh, cope with my anxiety and about 14 I don't know October 28th October 28th the last year uh, I said this isn't working this is making me sad this is making life worse not better so I quit <laughs> life's still not perfect congratulations David or I guess congratulations are past due if it's been 30 years. Uh, but that's my story about that. So yeah, my daughter's watch. Uh, <laughs> I think in some ways they kind of think it's cool. Their kids, their friends have my mugs. <laughs> this is going to sound pitiful, but I think their friends kind of think I'm a celebrity because <laughs> their friends' parents watch. So some, I mean, not watch all my lives, but again, I post a fair amount of videos and most of the videos I post are just clips that I do from these lives, uh, which honestly is almost a full-time job in and of itself. Cindy, you do need a mug. I wish I could get you all mugs. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to get this right. So if I drop the phone, bear with me. Oh, hold on, I need some water. That's kind of cool that your house was built in 1880, David. I think it's neat to have old homes around. Jack, I'm recognized from Coffee with Ken all the time. Somebody asked me if I've ever been recognized from Coffee with Ken by a fan all the time. All the time. Hey, thanks for joining, Relax. Sarah, I think I, yeah, you can get paid on here. Uh, I think you need 10,000 followers on TikTok to start making money. And you need a thousand subscribers on uh, the tube to start making money. And I'm getting, I'm about halfway there on TikTok and about two thirds of the way there on the other one. And I think you're going to, I'll make some money at that point. And I agree, it's too bad. But I think some way, somehow, it might not be on TikTok per se, that I'm going to find my next calling by this somehow, you know, whether it's. I don't know, being a counselor, a coach, or a therapist, or a teacher, or a pastor, a minister. Yeah. Hold on, Levi, hear my Holly. Thanks, Kevin. Please bring me a mug. Shannon, I will, but only if you promise to cook the stuffing just as good as you did this year. Uh, hold on, I hear Holly kicking the door. She, has, she felt like she was getting ignored. She knew coffee was Ken. Good. Coffee with Ken was going on, and she was going to be lonely. I gotta buy some more mugs. Somebody wants, people are asking for mugs. I'd love to give them out. I bought like 300 at the beginning of the year and gave them out to a bunch of local people. And uh, uh, I don't know, it felt so good to give them out. Holly, well, okay, I'm gonna have to slide the table back. Holly's the boss and she's here and she didn't want me chilling out. She wants to be able to get into the show. Here she is, there she goes. Sometimes she'll walk through and I don't have a ton of room between my coffee table and uh, uh, my couch and my knees. So Holly will slide her body on through and sometimes bang stuff. And I, oh, I got to drink my more, some more coffee. Mm. It's already getting kind of tepid. Uh, Nora, you asked what do they say? Kid you not. Well, I told you I was working a seasonal job for UPS. It was winter. It was cold outside. Not many people were there. I had people walking their dog. Multiple times, multiple times, people recognized me from Coffee with Ken while I was delivering packages. Uh, you know, gambling's a tough one. Somebody just asked me about gambling. Uh, that's a real tough one. That's a real tough one. And I've done a lot of videos on gambling. I used to gamble a lot. Uh, but even posting those videos, 
Ooh, New York Grand National is very fast. My first, somebody asked my first car was a Nissan 240SX. It was black. I thought it was pretty cool. It's only 140 horsepower, which is crazy. Somebody asked me about gambling. Gambling's a tough one because I think when you go to the casino and you lose money, you feel like a loser. <laughs> and you're going, crap, I lost $1,000 last night. I'm already in debt. I only make, I don't know, four or $5,000 a month, and now I lost 1000 last night. And I, lo- I played three times, went three times in the last week, and I lost $1,000 each tonight. I'm a loser. And I'm not saying you're a loser. I'm saying <laughs> this is the feeling, the words in your head. And uh, when you feel like a loser, I think the only way to feel better is by feeling like a winner or winning. And in my mind, when I was a loser, you know, I wanted to go back and get my money back. And, okay, thank you, RJ. I wanted to go back and get my money back. And so that calling would always be going on and it was an endless cycle. And then I'd win and I'd feel like, hey, I'm printing money. I won three grand last night. That's so fun. That can buy me, I don't know, down payment on a car or whatever. Uh, And you'd go back. But again, you're getting a rush and your mind is kind of playing tricks on you. I think the first step to getting over gambling is realizing that you're not a loser. Because I think the driving force behind all my gambling, it wasn't really the money. I mean, I could probably look at my bank account and see it wasn't a smart play. And... uh, uh, but I think the driving force was probably insecurity, feeling like a loser, feeling like you can only get that rush, that good feeling, that feeling like a winner uh, from, I don't know, putting a 10 on, uh, you know, getting a 10 on a double down with an 11 and uh, winning big and the rush that you get and the cheering and the crowds watching. If you were gambling big, it was all fun. Uh, so I'd say... Uh, Forgive yourself would be my first step if I was to cure a gambler. If I, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, link like your mugs and t-shirts. Yeah, I should. 50 is nifty. I should. 50 is nifty. Uh, right now, and a lot of people throw out some great suggestions about... Um, uh, a lot of people throw out some good suggestions on how to monetize this. Like, uh, um, you know, people say, hey, you should get a link to sell mugs and sweatshirts or whatever. And I should, because I have a decent enough audience. Uh, But right now I call it, I'll just say it. I called it a decent enough audience. And here's my thing. Uh, I think it's a decent enough audience. Right now there's 30 some people watching. Maybe later in the show there'll be 80. By the end of the day, I repost this on other social media. It might be seen, I don't know, a couple thousand times. I think before I really, really, really worry about monetizing the mugs or the this or the whatever, uh, I'm really focused on growth and growing this page and growing what I do and growing my social media presence and growing my audience. Uh, And my first target is 10,000 followers here here on uh, TikTok. So that's my goal. And I think if I honestly put the work, good morning, Tara, into figuring out how to post a link and get the mugs and sell these mugs, Ah, uh, that might take me a few days. And that would be a few days that I'm not out cranking out the content. And, uh, yeah, no, I'd love to have somebody come in and say, hey, I know how to do an online store. I'll do it and I'll float you the two grand to buy the mugs to sell the mugs. But honestly, I just, to me, that feels a little bit like a distraction uh, from my purpose. My sole purpose is growing this. And not my sole purpose. My sole purpose is... Uh, yeah, I'm there too, Leela. Uh, I'm there too. Um, and I'm working there, and that's closer to my goal. I want to hit 1,000 over there, Leela. And I'm at like 630. And my goal for t- today, I met with my business planner last Thursday. And we're, I got two business planners. And this one, uh, I met with her last Thursday. Or, yeah, last Thursday, and we're going to meet every week. And I talked to her about my goals and I said, I didn't really have any. And then I remembered I got some social media goals and she was young and hip and kind of into it. (laughs) You tell it to an old person, they think you're crazy. And when I say an old person, I mean a face like this, (laughs) shoe leather. And I don't know any other way, Zoe. Um, 
So anyway, I was with her last Thursday and we're dis- rescheduled for Wednesday, our next meeting. And I'm meeting her tonight. And at that time, my goal was to hit 4,700 followers uh, on TikTok by our meeting tonight. And at the point, I was at 4433. And I remember this because I wrote it down. And the other one, I wanted to hit 925 subscribers on the tube. And I'm at 930 already. So I've already achieved that. And I'm really, really close uh, to hitting the uh, TikTok goal. And I would like to do that. And I think, again, you start monetizing. And people kind of think you're crazy. And maybe I am crazy. There's such a fine... I'm taking my coffee into the microwave. There's such a fine line between genius and crazy. You know what I mean? You know, if Einstein's... If E didn't really equal MC squared... Einstein would just be some loony nut with a bad haircut. But instead, we consider him the greatest genius of all time. You know? I hate to say it. You know, because people get mad at Columbus, but I still bring them up. Uh, If Columbus was sailing across the ocean and the world was flat and he fell off, you know? we wouldn't still have a Columbus Day. And don't get into me on the PC arguments either way. I'm not trying to make a discussion whether Columbus killed indigenous people and it was horrible and he brought disease and all this other stuff. But I'm just saying, (laughs) the difference between genius and insanity is a very fine line. When you're rich, you're eccentric. When you're poor, you're nuts. Totally true, GC Mafia. Totally true. When you're rich, you're eccentric. When you're poor, you're nuts. Totally true. Totally true. <laughs> That's funny. That's a good one. I think I've heard it before, but it's still a good one. Uh, let me have a little more of this. Mm. Oh, That's good. Same with pain and pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, fine line between love and hate, Bella. Uh, I think when you tweak these emotions and you, you dig so deep, that, and I know it with my last wife, my second wife, you, that you love them so much. You know, if something goes wrong, you're going, ah, how could you do this? Ah. My father's eccentric, so speaks truth here. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, there's always progress. There's progress every day. Bella Boulov, yes. I believe I'm a work in progress and we're moving forward in the right direction every day. Somebody asked any progress with finding a new career. And I think every day we got a little bit of progress going in the right direction. I don't have any great breakthroughs that need shared. Uh, Yeah, I think we all are works in progress. And every day I get closer to finding the right answer, Uh, whether it be a career, whether it be relationship, whether there can be my need for more coffee. The coffee one's an easy. Oh, I got a, something I wanted to say. I was up, uh, ready to go a little bit early today. I was up early, uh, walked Holly early, got back early, not early enough to shower, uh, but I was still feeling kind of stressed and anxious and feeling like I had to get some stuff done. I think if you're struggling with anxiety and depression and you don't know what to do and you're almost like a deer in the headlights, I think if you start by cleaning your house, you're going to feel a little bit better. And I was feeling kind of messed up and a little kind of not the way I wanted to this morning. And I'm going, shoot, it's still dark out. Or we just got back from the Holly Walk. I got 20 minutes to go live. Not enough time to take a shower. What am I going to do? I I folded my blanket, made my bed, grabbed my broom, swept the floor, cleaned the counters. And I felt a little bit better. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing because you feel better because you're being productive. You're working towards something. You don't feel like a pig in a sty. And you feel a little bit of pride versus that little bit of shame when you're living in a messy house. And so just a little bit of cleaning, just a little bit of cleaning starts you on a good path and gives you the boost of energy or endorphins that can get you in the shower, can get you out the door, can get you knocking on doors, selling your product or finding a job or finding the next love of your life. But if you're, yeah, yeah, I think it's so important. It was amazing. I was just, you know, 
And I got a dog. You guys know I got a dog. She sheds. I see a clump of clumps of fur that I missed or that she must have just dropped when she came back in. I'm struggling not picking them up. Next time I go heat up my cup. Uh, Ty, I bet you do. A lot of us struggle with anxiety because uh, you're probably, your mind's racing. And is your house messy, Ty? If it is, clean it. I bet there's a mess in your house. If I bet you something stupid like the toilet paper roll is empty. Replace it. You're going to feel, okay, that took three seconds and this Toilet paper roll being empty has been bothering me for the last hour. And you're going to feel a little bit better. And you're going to, I mean, and maybe you won't. Your house is clean. Well, yeah, no, it's not a perfect solution. Uh, my house is clean. I bet it is. Think how bad you'd be, Joy, if it was a mess. Listen to Wayne Dyer, Frank said. I have to listen to Wayne Dyer. Make bed. Yeah, and making beds is important. I kind of got lazy on it over the last few days. Uh, honestly, and it was probably had something to do with uh, uh, something to do. Yeah, well, I'm always pretty clean too, Ty. But I bet if, you know, if you're, are you anxious now or are you okay because you're listening to me? Anxiety is when we're worried about the future. And usually we're sitting still, not doing anything, probably not even breathing too much. And we're worried about what's happening tomorrow or what's happening in two months. And I think just the action of getting up, grabbing a broom or grabbing a mop or grabbing a towel and cleaning your counter or your floor or whatever, it doesn't even matter. Toilet, heaven forbid, do a big one, clean your toilet. Uh, uh, Does uh, wonders, does wonders, so... So Holly's outside. My house is fairly clean. I'm going to get my watch. Hang with me. I'm going to get my watch. And I'm also going to pick up Wait, my watch. How am I supposed to tell the time? Oh, there it is. Hold on. Hang with me. Hang with me. Don't go anywhere. I was trying to ignore it. But you see that? Those bad boys were laughing at me. Hang with me. I'm back. Did you guys miss me? Makes me feel so much better. Just pick. I was sitting there and there. The hard thing with fur or hair. Uh, the hard thing with hair is you'll sweep it up. and it'll, I mean, because it's like a billion little tiny hairs shed out all over. And you'll sweep it up. But it's so light. Even when you're putting it in the dustpan, it's very easy for like a poof of the dog hair to go floating away. And apparently I had a couple, a poof there and a poof there. Then I was preaching, cleaning the house. Uh, and they were laughing at me. They're funny. <laughs> I come up with a lot of fake voices. I don't know, they come to my mind. I'm not, I can't do an imitation and I'm not a ventriloquist. I have no skills with my voice, but I, I just automatically do fake voices a lot. And I couldn't think of what... <laughs> hair would sound like if it was making fun of me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> what would my fake voice for a clump of hair be? I couldn't figure out if it was a high or low pitched fake voice. What would hair sound like if it could talk? Uh, user, I do, I do. I, uh, my business coach or my uh, nighttime, uh, the woman I'm meeting with tonight said that, that this is a good coping mechanism for me. Because uh, I was talking about about my stress and my anxiety and how I've always struggled with it, but I always treated it with alcohol and pot. And those aren't great ways to treat things. Uh, but they work. You know, they numb the pain. But they also numb the good stuff is the problem. And uh, I was telling her, you know, I don't have any coping mechanisms anymore. I used to cope with alcohol and pot. And she goes, hey, these are your coping mechanisms. Uh yeah, I do think I, I haven't missed it. I've missed it up till today. I don't even know what my calling in life is. Jack's son, what is my calling in life? Uh, I appreciate your thought. That sounds like optimism. What would hair sound like, Joy? I can't even. Hey, hey, maybe it's sound like that. Hey, Ken, <laughs> you missed us. <laughs> We're on the floor. 
<laughs> you can't see, you can't pick us up because you're doing your stupid live video. You're talking about how clean your house is, but I, I am laying on the floor. That's what I think the clumps of hair might sound like. I don't know if that makes sense to you. But that was the best voice after about five minutes of thinking. That is what the clumps of hair would have sounded like on my floor as they were laughing at me. I think it would have been a manly voice. It certainly wasn't pretty. <laughs> you know, it certainly wasn't pretty. I didn't think of those clumps of hair, even though they came from Holly, as feminine in the slightest. So it had to be a manly voice. That is what they would sound like. Sounded like bad hour to kind of do. It's fine over. I'm going to sing a song for you. And Bill's going to tell you a thing or two. We're having fun now. With something all And then mush mouth. Was that a hat? Was that a hat? I think that was a hat. Pulled down over his head. But I was thought until almost right now that it was like a shell. Because it looked like a shell. But I think now that I'm grown up and thinking of Fat Albert, that it was a... Uh, a hat and not a shell, but I always thought it was like, I don't know, half of a clam shell over his head. Uh, well, thank you, Julie Flanagan. I think it's because I'm delirious. I didn't get enough sleep. I woke up at midnight on my couch. I think there was still a Hitler documentary on. I like World War II documentaries. I think they were talking about uh, totally drawn a blank. His second in command. Anyway, I'm totally drawn a blank. And I went to bed and I was feeling kind of not right. And I took a sleeping pill and uh, I didn't get quite enough sleep. Yeah, no, Jackson, I am getting out of it. It was a knit hat. Okay. I am getting out of it. I do need a fresh start. But I'll tell you what, taking fresh starts is kind of painful sometimes. I don't really cook. Somebody asked if I cook. I heat up pizzas well. I microwave fairly well. I can make spaghetti. Uh, I heat up things real well. Salads. I don't heat up salads, but I eat a lot of salads. Have you ever signed a mug? No, I have never signed a mug, Jack Taylor. I've never signed a mug. Uh, nor I don't know what you're sorry about. Oh, uh, yeah, moved out of California. Where are you living, Jackson? Yeah, Cindy, you probably do one step at a time, but I kind of flopped out of my comfort zone. All steps at a time. Oh, Idaho. It's interesting. I was thinking about Idaho. I'd like it signed. All right. Would it it'd have to be like, because you'd want to wash your cup. Yeah, you definitely need a special marker. I was thinking the same chunk of change. Chunk of change, why don't we have your name? I have no idea what chunk of change. I didn't even know chunk of change. Chunk of change has been watching me for, I don't know, maybe two months or something like that. And for the first month and a half, I thought Chunk of Change might be a man. And all of a sudden, it was revealed to me that Chunk of Change is a woman. All right. Well, yeah, but that'd be a pain. We'd want a good marker, so <laughs> my very important signature. Speaking of very important signatures, I got Muhammad Ali's. I met Muhammad Ali. He signed my business card, and it was some sort of Nation of Islam or some sort of Islam pamphlet. And I don't have them anymore. And I would say, if you polled the whole world and said, and maybe this is, I'm old, so this is relevant now. Today they might say, I don't know, Justin Bieber or something. But when I was a kid and when I grew up, and if you ask Michael Jordan, who's the greatest human you ever met, he might say Muhammad Ali. Uh, not great, you know what I mean? The most famous person in the world I think by far was Muhammad Ali. And I met him and he signed my business card and he, it might be somewhere, somehow. It's probably my mom's house somewhere. Maybe got thrown in the fire. Maybe I started to use it as a fire. Uh, and uh, anyway, I uh, don't have his autographs anymore, but I still have the stories. He was in a limo. Outside of the state Illinois building, which is some big glass building in Chicago. I used to work downtown. Me and some friends were going to lunch. And he was either stepping out or he rolled down his window. And I looked over and I go, holy crap, there's Muhammad Ali. 
And we ran over and I said, hey, we loved you or we love you. I used to watch all your fights. Because in the 70s, boxing was so big. Boxing was so big. And my whole family would get around and they had like big fights. That couldn't have been every Saturday night. But, you know, I don't know, it was once a month. I don't know. Ken Norton would fight somebody or George Foreman would fight somebody or Joe Frazier or, you know. And it was so big. And there was only a few channels to choose from. Now I'll be flipping and my thumb will be getting sore and I'll, I don't know, hit ESPN 17 or something, plus 17 on my thing and there'll be some guys fighting that I've never heard of. But it used to be like stop the country big. Uh, I mean, maybe an overstatement, but there wasn't a whole lot of choices. And yeah, when Ali fought Fraser, and those fights were real like 72 through 74, I think. Okay, Julie Flanagan, thank you. Uh, that was kind of, you know, I probably came to awareness, like my first memories of a calendar, I think are 74. I was born in 68 and, uh, <laughs> yeah, Shannon hit the Gulf coast, go golf or golf, the Robert Trent Jones trail, hit the casino in Biloxi, go to the Gulf shores of Alabama. Hang out on that white sand. Brown this creamy, pale skin. I haven't shaved in a few days. How are you guys feeling about it? And I talk about it a lot. As a guy that shaves his head, I don't get to part my hair on a different side or gel it a certain way or do anything different. It all comes down to whether I shave or not. Again on tour. I'd have to get some mugs for the tour. Uh, yeah, new radical life change. Yeah, no, I thought about it. I actually had somebody watching that was saying I should move to Boise, Idaho with them. Somebody was talking uh, and said I should move to Boise, Idaho. Somebody, I don't even know their name, but I know their uh, TikTok symbol. So, uh, anyway, let's have a little more coffee. I don't know how I'm gonna long I gonna talk to you. Okay, Jackson. Uh, I hear Boise got extremely expensive because everybody was moving from LA to Boise, and uh, uh, I'd certainly consider it. Nora, is Shannon leaving? Did I say bye to Shannon? I'm not sure. I said bye to Shannon. Okay, Shannon, have a good one. Go be the best damn hospice nurse you can ever be, and I know that you are. Do I need to fill up my mug? No, no, no. Yesterday I was talking to a guy that watches my show. And again, I talked a lot about my goal of being 10,000 uh, followers on TikTok by March 31st. If I had to hit 10,000 followers, you know, if I had to do it, yesterday during my live show at eight o'clock, uh, which lasted about an hour, I ended up picking up like 67 followers. I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know why people from Asia and Africa and all over the place were tuning in. It was crazy. I had Tanzania and Indonesia and Thailand. Uh, uh, well, Jackson, I should go to Boise then maybe. But anyway, uh, I don't like blue football fields though. <laughs> but um, what was I going to say? Oh, if I had to hit 10,000 followers as quick as possible, I think I do like, do you guys remember the Jerry Lewis telethon that used to be on Labor Day? I mean, some of you young kids don't, but also was uh, a fairly uh, uh, kind of big event that we used to watch a little bit because again, there weren't too many choices on TV when I was a kid, uh, but they did a telethon and it might've gone for a 24 hours or two days straight. It was some long, long, long time. And they were raising money for muscular dystrophy, which is a good cause, of course. And uh, I would do like a live-a-thon. Like I'd go live and I'd do it until I hit 10,000 followers. Hey, go get them, Ty. Thank you. And, you know, it could take two days or three days. You know, 
and I might get pretty tired. <laughs> so, but chunk of change, what if like during the hours from like two to five at night, it's me snoring on my couch with some <laughs> World War II documentary going on in the background. And every now and again, I'd have a little gnome walk by with the count because I don't know how to do the fancy ticker. We need 6,423 more followers. Please follow Ken's page so he hits his goal. It's very important. So instead of having the electric thing do it, I'd have a little gnome walk by with the sign and say, 4,727 followers. <laughs> we have 5,200 and uh, I don't know, 60, 73 more we need. Take over for you in the middle of the night while you took a cat nap. I'm not sure who John Davidson is. I don't know who John Davidson is. He'd have to be in my house. Would he be quiet so I could keep snoozing over there? Would he be okay with the World War II documentaries? Would he be okay if my audience drizzled down to like seven at four in the morning? I don't, Cindy. I have a bunch of moderators. Now 50 is nifty. It makes it possible. It wasn't possible. Oh, okay. Well, I stopped watching Johnny Lightning probably after Jerry Lewis left. How do you control it? A relapse as far as what? Like drinking? Somebody asked me if I ever feel like a relapse. Are you talking about drinking? Uh, if you're talking about drinking, I don't control it. I don't even feel like it. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not tempted to drink at all. I'm not tempted even slightly. It's, I don't know. If I wanted to drink, I would. No, if I wanted to do either, I would. I was tempted to smoke pot once. I had a buddy over who was smoking, and it really smells good. Uh, that was kind of tempted. Uh, drinking, I'm not tempted at all. You know, I live, you know, there's a grocery store half a mile away. I could walk there if I wanted and go pick up some beer. Uh, I drive by bars all the time and restaurants. I've even uh, applied at a couple of restaurants or thinking of applying at a couple of restaurants as a bartender. I don't know that that would be a healthy thing. When you work in restaurants, your nightlife is late. A lot of people smoke cigarettes. A lot of people, you know, drink because it's kind of stressful and you're in that setting and you're up late and you're up till, you know, you get out of work at midnight or whatever and then you and a few of your drinking friends or your waiter friends go out to a bar for a couple hours and I just think I know I smoke cigarettes when I waited tables and I think uh for some reason smoking cigarettes is popular amongst waiters and I'm trying to keep uh certain influences out of my life well I'm not addicted I guess but it's, it's not even that I'm trying to control not drinking yeah I I was never one the thought of sobriety as a struggle. And I don't even like the word sobriety. You know, a lot of people go every day is a challenge. I'm just going to make it through today. And I feel that way in a lot of aspects. Sometimes my mental health, sometimes I'm depressed and sometimes I'm going, shoot, I don't know what I'm going to do. But I got this appointment at five o'clock that I got to make. So I'm going to make it to five o'clock. But it's not about drinking. I don't, I mean, I don't, even, I don't think I have any alcohol in the house. Uh, but I certainly, I mean, I go buy non-alcoholic beer. Good morning, Nanya. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think I'm addicted. I don't think it's physical at all for me. I think I just realized I was using it to numb the pain. And I thought there'd be better ways. So that's why. Yeah, for 30 years. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm just not tempted, so I'm not even controlling it. You know, I don't know. <laughs> if you're not tempted, you're not trying to control it. Yeah, I just really almost don't think about it. Although I talked to a buddy this morning and mentioned it, I go, "It's so weird." I remember seeing him after nine days, and he was so proud of me because he probably hadn't seen me without a beer in my hand in ten years. And uh, I said, hey, "I haven't had a drink in nine days." He goes, "Oh, that's awesome. I'm so proud of you." I was talking to him this morning. I go, now it's like 15 months and I really don't even think about it. I mean, I'm okay talking about it. I go to bars. It's kind of boring. Should know about any other devices, ladies? What? Yeah. 
Yeah, I got vices. I was pot smoking, gambling. I think I was, I mean, I don't want to say what I think I was addicted to, but I think I was addicted to all sorts of those things. Um, uh, yeah, nor I might be. And again, it's just not, I thought, I assumed, I, there was times in my life I recognized, holy crap, I'm on the couch here drinking Heineken again. I might be an alcoholic. I might really have a problem. And then one day I said, eh, this kind of sucks. I don't want to do it. And I don't feel any physical cravings to drink. Or even mental cravings. Like, holy crap, I'm getting the ass, my ass kicked mentally. Uh, but I'm never going, oh, if I only could drink a beer. I mean, that's never a temptation for me at all. Uh, so maybe I am a lucky one. i got tons of gambling stories, Jack's son. I don't want to go there because I'm going to sign off here in a few minutes. Uh, I like to keep this under an hour. It makes my editing a little easier. And uh, uh, it was so funny. I, I, I wanted to do that again yesterday. And I, my video was 59 minutes and 59 seconds. And it was an accident. I said, hey, I want to get off after before an hour. And I went up to the last second talking. And I don't, it makes it a little harder because I edit all these videos and I got to, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You know, and I don't get paid for it. I need to get paid because I need to make money because I got to buy mugs and give them to you. <laughs> and other bills, I promise you. Uh, but again, just if I do an hour long video, I can chop that into 10 other videos and I got to rewatch that. So if you guys are ever bored of me, I got to rewatch all this crap and then edit it and rewatch it again <laughs> and add words and add music and post it all over social media. I think it's a full-time job. I'm just not getting paid for it. I lived in New York Casino for years. It was not good. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah, we have casinos all over, and now we have them online. They're on our phones, if you wanted. I never was into sports gambling, really. Good morning, Yvonne. To be watched my live back. Yeah. Uh, good question, Leela. I've thought about that. I mean, honestly, I have no budget to hire anybody. Uh, chunk of change, you might be wrong. It might be the best full-time job because I think it, honestly, I think this offers me more earning potential than anything else, chunk of change. And I'm not sure it's exactly when I say this is this. Could be somewhere else, could be on a different platform. It could be on a stage even. But I think my earning potential is here. Leave a little bit, I'm a self, I'm a control freak and I don't know that I would trust somebody on Fiverr to go through my videos and find out what was funny. Because if I got, you know, if I showed my dad this video, he'd go, wow, that's stupid. And maybe the guy on Fiverr would too, and he wouldn't think my story about, I don't know, the dog hair or my dog hair voice was funny, you know? And he might just go, this is crap, throw it in the bin. And, if, you know, I might go back in that little moment, those 20 seconds when I was doing the dog hair imitation might be the best stuff I did on this whole video. And I'm not saying it was good or funny or whatever, but it might go viral and be seen by 10 million people. Uh, yeah, but training them just requires work, Leela. You know what I mean? I've thought about it. It'd have to be somebody I trusted, you know. And Hey, Joy, thank you so much for wondering or watching, I mean. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. I so appreciate you guys. I so appreciate you guys. I so appreciate you guys. Have you seen the Batman and PA on TikTok? No, I have not. I really do appreciate you guys, but it's Wednesday. I'm excited about my day and I'm looking forward to getting it started. I got a bunch of stuff I got to take care of and uh, I'm ready to dive into it. I hope you're ready to dive into your day. I hope you're feeling good. I hope you got something from uh, our little live today. I hope you are loving yourself. I hope you are forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.